What is the future of AI safety? Can a AI be dangerous? And if so, what do we do about it? Well, there's no doubt that AIs can be dangerous when they're operating cars that hit pedestrians or managing industrial robots that injure workers on a production line. AIs can also be dangerous when they're giving a medical diagnosis, which turns out to be wrong, or they're running an algorithm which doesn't grant someone a bank loan or extend someone's prison sentence as a result of poor or biased data. The challenge is, is that often when we're now talking about AI safety, we're not drawing from these pragmatic real-life examples, we're drawing instead from the world of science fiction. And speaking of science fiction, you might recognize this landscape behind me. This is the Liwa Desert near the border of Saudi Arabia. It's where the most recent Star Wars films were shot. In fact, this is, believe it or not, the planet Jakku, one of the frontier desert worlds. Now, one of the funny things about Star Wars is that although it's full of robots and droids and AIs, none of these seem particularly dangerous. And even if you've got a few malcontented droids out there doing bad things, somehow they never get networked and rise up to be some kind of Skynet that's controlling the world. The evil empire, as bad as it was, was seemingly smart enough not to put an AI in control of the Death Star. So one of the things I think you have to realize when you think about the future of AI safety is you have to really understand the limits around AI danger. And if you are an executive or a leader trying to drive an AI transformation in your organization, or you're an independent director on a board trying to avoid an open AI fiasco, you clearly need some principles to guide you as you think about the future of not just AI, but how we protect ourselves from it. So I've got three for you today. The first thing you need to realize is that there is more than one form of intelligence. Some are built on proprietary closed models. Others are based on open source models. Some forms of AI run in the cloud and require massive amounts of data to be trained. Others are so small that they could potentially be run on a mobile phone or even a Raspberry Pi device independently and not even connected to the web. The choices of AI that we build in the future will very much determine not only the ways we use them, but the risks and potential regulations and rules and principles governing how they're actually based in our society. The second thing to think about is that the most important time to watch an AI, whether it's being dangerous or not, is not just when it's being built, but when it's actually in operation. A lot of the discussion around AI safety for me really falls into the category of bad software design. I mean, clearly, if you're starting with bad or biased data, you're designing inappropriate algorithms that have the wrong optimizations, or you haven't properly thought about your security regime in terms of prompt or adversarial attacks, that AI model is going to run into issues at some point. But even more dangerous is when these AI models start to interact with the real world. And that's why I think in the future, your AI safety team in your organization is going to look more like your cybersecurity team. In fact, those two teams may even merge because the most important thing that's going to happen is watching how real life human beings are interacting with these systems and the kinds of outputs that they create. And from a regulatory perspective, we're probably going to need regulatory bodies that are kind of more like what you see now in financial services or in healthcare that are actually designed for in-market surveillance and operations. So they're looking for inappropriate or fraudulent transactions. They're looking for real life hacks that are taking place. Or they're like we see in the healthcare field where they're not just looking at regulatory approval of a drug, but actually misuses of that drug or potential things and outcomes that are inappropriate that happen long beyond the initial regulation is given. The third principle is this. The future is not chatbots, it's autonomous agents. When people first started using AI, it was really at the end of 2022 when the emergence of ChatGPT blew everyone's minds. But the model was kind of pretty simple here. It was a user or operator asking questions of a chatbot and getting interesting answers. But as the years have gone on, one of the most interesting trends that we're going to see is really the rise of autonomous agents who are given an initial request or a command and then break themselves into smaller pieces, often into smaller versions of themselves to go and retrieve information, research decisions, take actions in the real world, compile the information and come back with a finished result. And these autonomous agents are going to act not just on the behalf of corporations and institutions, but us as individuals. In a sense, we'll have our own digital twins that are like digital doppelgangers of ourselves that are authorized to apply for bank loans, go for job interviews, maybe even sit on Zoom calls we can't be bothered with. But as time goes on, we're going to need a much more sophisticated regime, not just in terms of safety principles, 
but also in terms of regulation and even licensing. I mean, you can imagine a scenario in which these intelligences become so sophisticated that they even need to be graded. We'll often have to find some kind of new model for measuring intelligence in artificial life forms. And it may be, depending on the degree of intelligence, capability, the potential reach and impacts of this intelligence, the higher the level of regulations and restrictions or licensing required, similar to the way we license firearms or wild animals. You know, the other movie that was shot in this location other than Star Wars was one of my favorites, and that is the latest Dune series of movies. And the funny thing about Dune is that that series was set in the aftermath of an epic struggle between humans and machines which the humans only very narrowly won. And one of the consequences of that struggle was an, a series of commandments, the most important being, thou shalt not make a machine in the shape of a human mind. Well, given the last 50 years and the rise of neural networks, I think we can safely say we missed the boat on that one. But it's probably not too late to actually design a world in which AIs and humans can successfully coexist. The strange and final irony, I think, about the big AI safety debate today is that not only are most of the proponents of strong regulation themselves big tech companies who are trying to stop the entry of other open source competitors, these companies are often running not only closed black box AI models, they're running highly centralized models trained on vast amounts of data that are plugging into even more data sources. Now, if you're a science fiction author looking for a premise for some kind of Skynet emerging with the risk of existential threat to humanity, it is exactly that kind of centralized proprietary model that would probably be the basis. So as we look to the future and we try to imagine exactly how AI safety is going to work, I think one of the best places to start is to forget a little bit about science fiction and instead focus on the real and pragmatic issues facing the utilization of AI today because it's only by taking that viewpoint that we're gonna have the best chance of both designing and defending a truly AI-powered civilization.